Okay, so today we'll be looking at forms of writing. It's likely to be a two-part uh, plenary, but we'll see as much as we can cover today to, I mean, if we are able to cover everything today, that's fantastic. Uh, but if not, then we'll just take the concluding part at the next uh, plenary I'm going to take. So we are looking at the forms of writing I will be doing, we'll be doing a, an overview of different forms such as uh, expository, narrative, um, persuasive writing. There's also creative writing, but you guys have already done that. So we are just looking at the ones that you guys have not done. And as I always say, there is strong possibility that you guys have been actually operating, undertaking, or performing this, these different forms of writing. The only thing is that you have not been able to put a name to what you are doing. Oh, that this writing is a piece of narrative, is a persuasive writing. This is an expository, an expository article that I just uh, penned down. But today what we just is just to give that identity so what you have been doing, maybe without much of uh, acknowledgement of it as, oh, this is the form of writing that I've been doing. So um, we start with expository and no, just like the word sounds, the is derived from the word expose, expose, expose. When you expose something and no, uh, that, that's the kind of writing that essentially instruct that shows, that explains and tells by giving information about a specific topic. Expository writing is the kind that exposes more information about something that maybe either two we don't know much about. It's giving us more information is telling us how to do something that we don't know how to do before, or is telling us a different way to do what we have been doing in a certain manner. And expository writing usually answers to these basic questions of who, who does what, who is it? What did he or she do or what is he or she doing? Or what does he or she plan to do? Where did that take place? Or where is it taking place? When? At what time? Why? Why is it happening? Why are we talking about this in the first place? Where are we having this session? And how? How is it going to be done? How was it done? How best it should it be done? So expository pieces of writing are the ones that address these kinds of these informations, these questions. They tell you the who, they tell you the what, they tell you the where, they tell you the when, they tell you the why, and then they tell you the how. Now, the thing is that it's not all the questions that may be answered in a piece of writing. But it's just to tell you that, okay, these are the things that actually writing usually actually highlights. These are the things that it gives you more information about. And in terms of explicit writing, it also has its own types. It has the number one, which is the informative. It has the how-to, and it has the comparison and contrast type of expository writing. I mean, these words are pretty explanatory. Informative tells us about information, provides information about, I mean, about something, about a concept, about somebody, about an event in a very logical sequence. Now, when you are writing informative essay, you are not forcing your opinion down the throats of your readers. No, it is a piece of writing that is meant to inform or educate 
your audience, your readers. It's not meant to, uh, it's not meant to, um, to make them to shift their stance from where what I mean the what they subscribe to. You're only giving information. You're only educating them about a concept they don't know about or something they don't know enough of. So it's that kind of writing that will explain something to most readers what they don't know. But it can present the latest research, the latest uh, findings, the latest knowledge about a particular topic. It can also help to uh, make simple a very complex term. And it's also that piece of writing that will analyze a cause and effect relationship between something and what happens next. So it can analyze a cause and effect. Oh, we, we've seen that whenever there is fuel scarcity in Lagos, the prices of, of items, food, everything usually goes up. So what is the what is the what is the uh, the relationship between a, a hike in fuel price and rising cost of living? So that is what an expository writing would do. It would give you more information about that. So there's a cause and there's an effect. So it's marrying that for you. It's helping the readers to see, oh, oh this is why this is the case. That is what an informative essay does as part of expository writing. Now to the how-tos, how-tos, you know, with the, with the, um, with the boom of motivational speaking and the self-development, career development industry, now this type of essay or this type of writing has become very popular. And you have, those are the ones that are talking to how to do something, how to be the best, how to be professional, how to be productive, how to be a star performer. You know, so many um, knowledge out there about telling us how to, and you know, they will explain how to achieve those ends in a very sequential process, in a very sequential manner. It's telling us how to solve a problem, how to become better, how to apply some of the primary knowledge, how to get something done. And you no, know, this kind of writing usually appears in, as I said, chronological order. I mean, and you use, I mean, this transition words, firstly, secondly, thirdly, but to begin with, a continuation further afterward. These are words you use to link so that your writing is very interesting to read. Use this word to link your, your, your thoughts and your arguments together. Then the third part of uh, expository essays, the compare and contrast essays, where you compare and contrast um, issues, subjects, ideas, and you, know, you, you look at the similarities and then the differences. Now, this may sound a bit like uh, you're talking about a uh, person, but no, you're just presenting the, 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 the ideas in two different clothing, in two different appearances. Okay, so this, this is the idea. These are the pluses of this idea. These are the, the minuses. These are the similarities that they have. These are the differences that they also have. So two subjects, two issues, two arguments, or even more than two. And then you are looking at them one after the other. What are the commonalities? What are the differences? And you know, by, by actually writing this piece of, uh, of essay, you actually help your, your audience, your readers, to understand the concept better. Because now you are giving them some insights that maybe otherwise they did not even know before because you are you are analyzing you are drawing out i mean commonalities and you're also drawing out differences you are drawing out the things that bind them together you're also drawing out the things that separate them be it concepts be it individuals 
And then pressure was also help you to be able to uh, to convey this kind of idea better when you're looking at similarities, differences, both. However, similarly, by contrast, these are the traditional words you use that will make your argument to sound very, very logical, very convincing, and very appealing to the reader's eyes or the, to the hearing. Now, to narrative writing. And just like the word says, narrative is that piece of writing where you have to narrate. Where you tell a story about people, about things, about concepts, about events. And this can either be personal narrative, it can be, I mean, it can be biographical narrative, and it can also be fictional. That is, it can be real event. It can also be something that is trumped up, that is also just imagined. But the kind of writing where you have to narrate, tell a story about a place, about somebody, about an event, about something you are narrating. It is called narrative writing. And it has its own types, just like we looked at for the expository writer. And these are the types of narrative writing. Now, when you're talking in terms of narr personal narrative uh, essay or writing, you're talking about your real experience. You know, we can write an article about yourself. Some of you, I don't know if I mean, you guys were the one that were asked to do that. You were asked to convert your resume, your CVs into a prose. That is a narrative, that's a personal narrative writing. Because you, know, you are talking about yourself. You are in the, and you know, you're not, some, some people will not talk about maybe the, how they started. They can maybe pick, maybe just the academic journey. And you know, when you writing narrative piece, you are using the first person voice or plural, I, me, my, but if it's, I mean, if it's, sorry, if it's singular, or if you are talking about would be your family, for instance, they will be using the plural form, which is, which, I mean, which has to do with we, our. So the, the voice is really in the first person, either singular or plural. And then, depending on what, you, what you're writing, you are focusing on what is important for the question you are answering. Unless they ask you to write about your entire life, then you just focus on being, you want to know maybe your work, your, I mean, your professional experience, then you talk about work, your academic experience, you talk about your schooling. And then, what, why are you even picking your pen? And picking your system to do this writing, you have to let us know, let your reader know why the experience you choose to write about is important. Because you won't just write all kinds of humdrum stuff. You want to write what is important, what will make people want to read, something that will engage your readers. So you don't just write for, for the writing sake, why am I writing this personal piece? What am I being asked to do? Then, if it's biographical writing, that can be either you writing about yourself, which is much more, this is a bit a, a bigger than just the personal narrative. You're writing about it be uh, the entirety of your life. It'd be, I mean, talking, celebrating a land, landmark uh, age, and you want to write about your life so far. Then you are, you are delving down to even when you were born, uh, the socio-economic circumstances or situation of, at that time. I mean, the political issues, developments around that time. So you, you deep dive when you are writing a biography, either for yourself or for somebody else. And a biography is usually much more robust than just personal peace. And it can either be full biography or a memoir. Memoir just focuses on an aspect of the person's life. 
So if you're writing your own biography, that is autobiography, you have to now put auto, A-U-T-O, in front of this biography. But if it's for somebody else, then that's just biography. And then the what you're writing, if it's for yourself or for somebody else, determines the, the voice you use. If it's going to be the first person or the third person voice. Then to the third part of a uh, third type of narrative writing, which is the fictional writing. And you no, know, I mean, all of us, we've read novels, we've read uh, all manner of fiction. So that is a narrative piece. With them because the, the, this based on you are reading the imagination of somebody, somebody has sat down, has conjectured um, events, circumstances, developments, and turned them into a prose, into a fictional work, or purely imagination. But the point is that you can this can actually be inspired by a real life event. Event and a real life event can actually motivate uh, an author to do a fictional piece. But once it's fiction, then it's, it's mostly imaginative. The imagination of the author, the authors cannot be cannot be charged for it because hey, I'm just writing based on my imaginative flight. How far is taking me? However, there's also I an mean, element where you have both fiction and facts also means that there are some there's another another form of writing where you have both fiction the this the stuff are fictional but the the things really happened real life that is called faction faction where you have a combination of fiction and facts in a narrative piece and there are some of them around one of the very classic ones is uh, uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm. That was addressing communism in Russia. So you can have, uh, I mean, and that, you know, if you look at it, it's another form of, right, um, we're calling it an, a, a more complex or technical terms, which is called allegory, where you give the attributes of human, you transfer it to animals or to non-living human beings. So it depends on if you are writing fictional stuff, they are mostly imaginative, imaginative uh, um, plots that you are developing. And you know, there must be a uh, what what they call it now, there must be um you're talking of plot narrative. Um, how do you also arrange that? And then there is a crisis. There must be a crisis uh, that the whole narrative is trying to actually resolve. So uh, I'm trying to get, I mean, the word does slip my mind. There's a, there's a particular term that is used for that crisis that that is what, that is what actually determines the beauty and you know the the intensity of a narrative of a fictional work or a narrative piece that they are trying to solve. There must be that issue, that conflict. Yeah, that's a conflict. There must be a conflict that the whole writing is about. That is what they are trying to solve. That's the problem that the fictional work is about. So, the, I mean, how intense your conflict is also determines how engaging your piece of writing will be to the, to the readers. Then persuasive writing. This is the third form that we are looking at today. Um, and this presents the writer's opinions and tries to convince the reader to agree. This, this one is about your own stance, your own opinion, your own perception, your own interpretation of an issue. Are you not trying to persuade your readers to shift ground and agree with you or to shift ground and join you in 
pushing this course. And you know, for a persuasive writing, we're looking at it has uh, these four basic basic elements: um, an opinion statement. That is what you are trying to do. That is what that is the argument you are trying to convince them to agree to adopt. The opinion statement that can be the title of your essay. It can be in the open in the opening paragraph. And then we have reasons for such opinion in order to highlight your reasons. This is why you should uh, do this. Now, if I say that, okay, um, Japa is dangerous. Japa is dangerous. That is an opinion statement. I'm actually stating my opinion. This thing is scratching Japan. Japa is not Japan. So, and that is an opinion statement. Then I have to profile reasons why the Japa syndrome, why the mass migration is dangerous. The loss of human power, I mean, manpower capacity in those countries where people are just mass migrating from conflicts. People that are left behind, they are usually vulnerable. It can easily be overrun by, it will be, I mean, it be external forces. Then also fosters um political crisis bad governance because if who can actually challenge the government they are not there the, intel the intelligentsias the elites have left so you start to give different reasons why uh people should not japa as we know it or should not migrate as we know it and then you know, when you are also writing this you are, you are stating the points the reasons for people to adhere to your own perspective, you also, you also need to call up objections. Then it's okay, yes, for instance, you will say, but you know, the, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, uh, cost of living is better over there. Um, I mean, welfare is, is provided in all those Western countries. But you know, you have to also state the opposition views. And then when, when you call those, you deflate them. So yes, cost of living is, I mean, I mean, welfare is, is better over there. However, how many people are able to access those welfare? So you you actually speak for your opposing ideas and then you still now deflate it. That's what makes your argument very, very, very persuasive, very, very robust and very well thought of. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the article, you call for action call for action, okay, that's, you can see with all this, that's why when you listen, listen to debaters, they will say, okay, I hope that <laughs> I've been able to persuade you, I've been able to convince you. So you call to act, you may not do it in that elaborate uh, way, but you know, you have to call for action, you are calling your readers to change course, to move, uh, to shift turns, to move from one point to, to the other. Your own, uh, your own standpoint, your own poll, or poster of the argument. Then, how do you write an opinion statement? Because you know, this is a bit technical, so we just do a little uh, deep dive into that. You know, it should be a, se a sentence that gives your opinion. And there's a formula. The topic, plus your feeling about it, will make a strong opinion statement. This is the um, you're talking about maybe security issue in, in, in the country, for instance, and then you 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 say something, and then that the 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 depressing state of security in northern Nigeria. That depressing state is already stating your feeling, your your feeling about it, that you are depressed by it, that you are bothered that this thing doesn't gel well with you. So that, that is what you do. We are talking about security in the country or in northern part of the country. But if what you've used that you've married to that security already expresses your feeling. And then you start to now talk about, you introduce the topic, introduce the subject, give some statistics if you are able to, and then you now start to give reasons why you 
are writing about this, why you are talking from this perspective, why you are stating what you are saying. And then as you stating your reasons, you're also adding supporting details. You're not just stating a point one um, because people, many people have lost their lives. How? You have to give more details so that your readers can understand better what you are trying to tell them to do. Because persuasive writing is meant to help the readers to shift ground, to move from one position to the other. And you can only do that by arguing in a logical manner, in a very elaborate language, using words that will be able to convince them using statistics, using graphics, using data that will convince them why they should drop their own uh, position and take yours. And then, you know, talking about answering objections, you also just mentioned those objections. Uh, you know, you may want to say this, but this is why this is not even a, a tenable position to hold. You, want, you may say this, and then you also counter it. That is how you marshal a persuasive writing, a persuasive communication. You have to acknowledge the opposing views. You have to acknowledge the objections against your own point. And then you raise them and you deflate them. That shows intelligence. That shows preparation. That shows somebody who has, who has already invested him or herself in that, in that exercise. Then call to action. Uh, so it doesn't have to be as elaborate as you hear in debates, but there should be something you are asking them to do. It can be subtle, it can be direct, it can be bold. And you know, it should be in the last paragraph of your writing. Uh, of course, you have to use verb. So now we're looking at persuasive writing. Uh, persuasive writing, uh, the types of it, opinion essay. One, I mean, the first, okay, this one is stating my opinion about something. There's also the problem solution essay, the one that is um, highlighting the problems there are and proffering solutions to them. And then there's also the pro con essay, the ones that would, it's, it's not, it's, it's narrative in a persuasive in nature, what is presenting, you know what you want them to do, but you are, you are not saying, come and do it, you are presenting them the pros and the cons of the issue, of the argument. So a logical reader will say, wow, this is making sense. It's making sense. And by agreeing with you, they're already shifting the, the position for where they used to be to your own side of the, of the, of the narrative, of the argument. So these are types of persuasive writing. When you present your opinion, I mean, the opinion essay presents your opinion about, and no, it's your opinion. Though it's good that you actually converse or you are pushing out credible opinions, but it's still your opinion. And you know, just like we said, those those things, those elements form your opinion essay. The I mean, you are stating your views, you are stating your belief, you are stating your your stand about a particular issue, about a particular development in the society, about a particular incident. You are you are actually expressing your opinion about it and then you with your strong opinion statement you develop your title and then you start to use big reasons and then details to back up your points then for problem solution essays um you i mean obviously you i mean there's a problem and you're trying to convince the reader that you have the solution and your solution will work so you present the problem you present your solution and you add I mean, I mean, and uh, that will form an opinion statement. So, um, to give an example, good governance will reduce or will stop mass migration from Nigeria. The problem is mass migration. The solution is good governance. Now, what I've done is. I've created a strong opinion statement. 
that good governance, which is my opinion, will stop the problem of mass migration. And then, and I asked, so that's how you come with this formula, problem plus solution, and it doesn't have to be in any order. It depends on, you can see, I mean, good governance is the solution, problem is mass migration, but no, they are not arranged this way. But at the end of the day, what you would conjure up would be a strong opinion statement. And then I now start to present why good governance will naturally solve the problem of mass migration. And you know, so it has two parts where I start to persuade them, tell them this, how serious the problem is, what we are losing in terms of capital as a nation. And then I, I, I highlight all the issues, all the problems. And then the second part, I now start to provide solutions. So that's why we need good governance. That's why we need accountability. That's why we need this, we need that to solve this problem. And as people are reading, it will yes, too, it's making sense, it's talking sense. And they will start to agree with you with the demand for good governance. And you will have persuaded your readers to take action. Then for the pro con essay, which you no, know, you you have your own, but this one is a bit subtle. You have your, your opinion about something, but you know you are not forcing it on your readers, on your audience, right from the from the beginning. You are using a, a very analytical way of doing it that is very depersonal personalized, even though you are expressing some of your own opinion. So you are saying you are, you are highlighting the pros, the positives, and then the cons, the negatives of an issue, and that will help you to actually get them to see things from your perspective. So the pro parts, okay, just like that one, that also has a two, two parts to it. You have the four pro part that highlights the benefits, the advantages, the positives, and then the cons part highlight the drawbacks. What do we stand to lose? What do we stand to, I mean, to, to, I mean, to ultimately cost us? And then by presenting those two to your audience, to your readers, to your listeners, they, they we are not even telling them to do, I mean, they would just be making the conclusion themselves because they are listening to you, because they are reading your piece, because they are watching you as you are marshalling your arguments. Okay, um, I think... That is the end of the session today. Do we have any question? Any question? Any um, comment? Anyone, please? Yes, I have a question. Okay, please ask. Yeah, the room is up. Yeah. Thank you so much for breaking on this topic down for us. I could just imagine um, I read a lot of uh, editorial pages on newspaper. But as I pick a newspaper, my first time is usually the editorial page. I'm, I'm just trying to link it to persuasive and that's that I just finished explaining. And I think uh, I'm drawing some pages together. So my question is when you were explaining on um, narrative. Okay. So um, I'm trying to, to differentiate it from creative writing. So they appear to be close. Close enough that sometimes I can't really tell you. So, but as I made mention of um, the doors and not time, I used to think that it's actually a crazy writer. So, from, from what I've read now, it's more of a fictional. So, how can we clearly draw the difference between crazy and fictional? Okay, um, mm -hmm. thank you for that question. The For a narrative write, writing, is a bigger form of creative writing. A, a narrative can be creative in nature, but the creative writing doesn't have to be narrative, even though it narrates. So they are a bit, they are close in a way, they are similar, but the narrative writing is like the more umbrella because there's no way you can be, you are writing about a creative piece that you won't do narration. And that's why I mentioned that you guys 
to have done creative writing uh, some weeks ago when you had me coming to teach you. But creative writing, you are very elaborate with your creativity. In narrative writing, you are actually stating facts, real life experience. But creative writing, it doesn't have to be real life. You actually, you are, you are, you are the ones developing those plots, those stories, those incidents yourself. You are imagining them. They are products of your imagination. So that is the main difference they, they, I mean, they share. In terms of narrative, they are, you are looking at your own personal, real, real life experience. What really happened? Most journalistic pieces are narrative in nature. Because those are things that happen. Yes, it can also be creative, but narrative is more or less talking about what has happened. Creative writing is about what happened in somebody's head, or maybe what happened in real life that somebody has mixed with many embellishments, with many uh, fictionalized stuff to make it really beautiful and all that. And you know, some real life will have been removed once it's an adapt adaptation of what has happened in real life. Some, some real life will be removed, some will be embellished, some will be changed so that you don't offend sensibilities or maybe to pander to the audience that you are developing the piece for. But once it's creative, it's, I mean, it's answers to imagination. But narrative is more or less real life. I hope that that is clear. I hope that that explanation uh, answers it for you. Very clear, sir. Thank you very much. Any other question? Mm -hmm. Any other? Mm -hmm. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, sir. Um, I want to um be clear on something. Um, I want to see if I understand what you was, what you mentioned earlier. For persuasive writings, can we say that um copy writing or those people that yes, very very so. So they are the type of writing now is classified as persuasive writing. Yes, persuasive, but in a creative way. Okay, sir. Yes, copy copywriting. When you are writing hard copies, you're writing maybe is is persuasive in a, in a in a creative way. Even can be narrative because there are some that they tell you the experience. They are trying to actually I mean get your emotions, get your sentiment aroused, and they tell you this person had this issue and until they start using this product or this service and then their life started getting better. So, but you know, it, it preys on uh, sentiment and all that. So, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a persuasive writing in a creative way. It's a creative flair to it. I hope that answers the question, uh, Deborah. Yes, sir, it does, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Any other question, please? Any other question? Okay. Uh, I want to say thanks for coming. We we'll see again. I'm not sure if I'll be the one to take you guys next week. So, but when we see again, we'll see. Um, have a fantastic weekend, and do have um, a blessed Friday evening. From here, bye. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye.